happy Friday, everyone. Still, uh, my low is that I'm still bummed about my Facebook account getting hacked. It is. It's just, this week has just been not very good for me whatsoever. Between learning something I didn't wish happened on Saturday, losing power, getting sick, and now this? I mean, listen, 2024 was supposed to be the year I tied it all together, and it's not really looking like that. I mean, maybe, I mean, over the, over the last couple of years, it really does seem like the latter half of each year has made, has gotten things better. So maybe I'm holding out a little bit of hope that hopefully when I leave for Colorado and come back, things will start picking up in terms of being good again. But I gotta tell you, after what happened on Wednesday, my heart is in shambles. I'm still completely devastated. The only thing I haven't done is cry about it, and really that's because, on the whole, I know that I'm a lot more fortunate than I would give myself credit for. But it doesn't make what happened any less awful. Which is something I'll probably be saying a lot for a while. Um, my high is I got to see my, uh, my folks last night. As well as, uh, do you guys like my new haircut? Actually, funny story. You guys know that if I get a haircut, that means the 100 days is about up, and therefore I gotta start preparing for the state of my video dress. The day I usually get my haircut, I try and map out, okay, I'm getting my haircut today, day whatever 100 number it is is right here, so from then I gotta count how many days until the next 100 is up. And usually, it's the last Thursday before, you know, I did the state of my being address, and that's when I get my haircut. For starters, I kept doing the math wrong because there's like, after the state of my being address next Saturday, there's going to be four more days in the month of July, 31 days, which is going to be um, 35. And then I accidentally kept adding it wrong because... September is supposed to be 65 days. I kept doing 75. So I kept thinking October 20. So for a little, for maybe five minutes, I thought October 25th was going to be the next day of my being address. But here's the thing. Every 100 days, like this, day my, the next day of my being address is going to be next Saturday. And it's every two days per 100, meaning... For day 2600 or 20, yeah, 2500, it's going to be on a Monday. Day 2600 is going to be on a Wednesday. 27 is going to be on a Friday. And October 25th is not on a Monday. So I had to redo the math like several times. And so the next day of my being addressed after this upcoming one will be Monday, November 4th. So I totally kept screwing that up. And also, actually, let me get my Hot Ones notes out because there's a Hot Ones episode I gotta talk about. Hold on. Right. So, in trying to plan out when my next haircut was going to be, I realized the last Thursday before the next state of my being address would be Halloween. And knowing I'll probably be going out trick or treating with a few choice people that day. I had to think, do I want to do it Wednesday, October 30th? Or should I just keep things safe and just do October 24th? So long story short, my um, next haircut's going to be October 24th. So uh, you guys have been warned. And in some ways, getting a haircut seems fitting right now. Considering everything that's happened, maybe a fresh new do will bring a fresh new perspective on life. At least, that's what I hope. And listen, 
if this week has shown anything, it's that, you know, a, a lot can happen within one week. So imagine how crazy, you know, a hundred days is going to be. Is a hundred days is going to get. Admittedly, it is a little bit worrisome, considering that, you know, I'm worried that what happened this week was such a huge, impactful week, and not really in the best way. That's going to completely overshadow all the good that happened in the last hundred days. But I don't think that will be quite the case. I mean, it's a shock to my system, believe me. But, again, on the whole, I have been through worse. And, you know, I just got to, I got to roll with it. And, considering that the state of my being address, this upcoming one, that is, will be the last day I'm in Colorado until I go home. And considering the night before, I will be going to see the Tedeschi Trucks Band at Red Rocks. I am really hoping that's the magic formula for saving it. I gotta hold out hope. That's all I got. Speaking of things I got, there's a new Hot Ones episode I gotta talk about. Oh, hold on. Hold on, something's up. Okay, that was weird, like some menu that you, that, you know when you right click, like there's a menu that shows up, it just wouldn't go away for some reason, but I mean, it made it go away, we're good. So, um, Donald Glover, aka Childish Gambino. This is actually a very important time for Childish Gambino because... This upcoming album he's making is the last album that he will be making under the name Childish Gambino. Which brings up to the first question that Sean asked, like, how he knew he would stop using the name Childish Gambino. And to him, to Donald Glover, that's just one of those things where it ran, it, he knew that it ran its course. He knew that he did all he could with this moniker. He's thankful for it. He's appreciated all it's given him. But it's time to gracefully retire it. Which I respect greatly. Um, he talked about what it was like working with Shay on choreography for the music video for Bigfoot Littlefoot. He remembered that the room was very hot, which led to, you could say it was a hot one. You know what? I've seen every episode of Hot Ones. I don't think I've ever seen anyone use that pun before. So, um, Charles Gambino for just the pun. So, sorry, Donald Glover. To Donald Glover, he's not going to watch this, but if he does, Donald Glover, if I was wearing a hat right now for that pun alone, I'd be tipping it off to you. So, uh, here we go. Um, he talked about the meaning and cultural impact of lemon pepper wings which is to enjoy the journey, not destination, because if you don't know what lemon pepper wings are, I mean, listen, I'm going to say New York. Buffalo wings, that is one of the things that we do best. You know, if you haven't had a buffalo wing, it's pretty much hot sauce, butter, maybe some other spices. You know, buffalo wing. However, wings come in many different flavors, many different flavors that I like. I love me a good barbecue wing. I love me a good garlic parmesan wing. Lemon pepper wings are something I never really have that often. Not that I hate them, far from just there's never really much of an opportunity to have them. And they went to this one place in Atlanta, I can't remember where it was, where Charles Gambino ordered lemon pepper wings, but he asked for them wet, which had never been done before. And from that experience, he learned it really is 
more about the journey to get to that moment and not the destination. I can, I can relate to that. And the fact you use wings is right up my alley. Um, he talked about how being petty can serve someone creatively, which I will admit, I've done things out of petty that, you know, have caused me to work on my work on the things I do and get better. I have. In fact, um, full disclosure, many years ago, uh, I was in college. And, um, like, this one person was about to graduate because I was doing cross-country driving. This is before I really got in shape and really took things seriously. Where this one senior who had never done anything varsity related, never really was anywhere near the top, and I said he was a know-nothing senior. Keep in mind, this is in September. It was all the way until February that same school year where this one girl who was like a sophomore that year. Actually, that's not entirely true. Like, um, this person already graduated, and I said that this guy was nothing senior. And apparently this one girl who was a sophomore, age at least, like, um, walks up to me and said, don't you call him a no-nothing senior unless you beat his 5K time. Well, um, you know what? I never confronted this girl after I, um, beat his 5K time. But, uh, believe, here's the thing. There's another app, because I used to wrestle in college. There, like, the worst teammate I ever had was a wrestler, and he nothing but whine, bitch, complain, and moan. Like, if I walk, if I walked up to this girl saying, screw you, bitch, I beat your boyfriend's 5K time, your man is a no, was a no-nothing senior, if I did that, I would have been like that wrestling teammate I had. So, um, I took the high road. I very much took the high road. So, uh, there you go. And keep in mind, I worked hard in order to beat that fight. Like, I did work hard. Like, two a days, running, like, well over 10 miles a day. Like, trust me, I, I was putting in work. Unfortunately, though, I weigh over 200 pounds, and let's be real here, if you're going to do good in cross country, you got to weigh like 180 bare minimum. I mean, the less weight you're carrying, the faster you go, right? Um, let's see. He talked about the difference between writing, writing for himself and writing comedy for SNL and 30 Rock, and when it comes to writing for yourself, it's a matter of like, you're writing it for you. Like, only you know what's funny. Only you know how this would work. And it's like a chef making food that he likes, but he also knows that, some, that people would also like as well. <coughs> In that regard. Um, let's see. He talked about how comedy and rap, while they are different, they can clash in a lot of good ways. They can clash in some not good ways, but also in some good ways too, and that's awesome. Um, they talked about the differences between fans of both of his personas. Because like, if you're from Canada, you're going to like 30 Rock, or, you know, Community. That's what it's, Community. You know, basically, different, it really is apparently a location in regards to fans of both of his personas, which I find hilarious. Um, his proudest achievement for growing fresh produce is growing mulberries. Also, uh, he talked about what a tangelo is, which is like an orange, but more red and more sour than a tangerine. Which, okay. Um, let's see. Right, and they got to High River Covers Up. Yeah, this week we didn't get just a reaction to the bond either. The, the, the growing produce and mulberries question. That was the bond. Uh, he talked about how, um, how, you know, heat from hot food can get you high sometimes. Which, listen, I don't seek out that kind of stuff. I like to believe I live a very clean and sober life. 
Not that I've ever had a problem with drugs or alcohol. So I can't say I've actively sought out, you know, getting high via eating spicy food. But, I mean, listen, I've ran four marathons. You know, not once did I ever get any kind of runner's high. Like, ever. Like, to get... Maybe I'm looking at runner's high differently than other people do. Because, and keep in mind, this is just to my perspective. If I was high, I wouldn't really have a care in the world as I'm running. I'd be smiling a lot more, and I wouldn't quite be aware of what's going on. Listen, I ran four marathons. I was 100% aware of every step I took, every turn I made, and every person I saw as I was running all 26.2 miles, each and every time. I can tell you, not once did I ever get runner's high. My point is, I guess if you're not doing drugs, getting high is a matter of perspective. So I don't really know if I could ever personally get high, you know, eating spicy food. And it's not really something I'd ever really seek out. But if I ever did out of morbid curiosity, it's the sort of thing where if it happens, it happens. And... For the final, I mean, remember, this is the last album under Childish Gambino's name. So is there any clarity behind what Childish Gambino is? It's becoming a boss. It's coming into your own. You know, and Donald Glover even said himself in a way, well, not te didn't, say, didn't technically say this, but he implied that, like, Childish Gambino, it was a means to, you know, like, how put his name out there. It helped him make him famous. And through all the writing he's done, and even some of the acting he's done, like, he can now say that both of his personas are legends in their own right. So that's why he wants to gracefully retire Charles Gambino. He knew that he didn't need it anymore. But he wanted to go out gracefully. Hence why we have what we have right now. So, um, Judana Glover, mad respect. You know, I know that this is your last album under the name of Childish Gambino. Um, whatever endeavors come your way next, I hope are met with much success and satisfaction. To the good folks over First Refusing Fusion Highlands, it was an awesome episode. I'm not gonna lie, I actually do feel a little bit better about how things are right now, so... Thank you, Hot Ones. Um, I hope you all like this video. If you like to subscribe to YouTube channel, follow social media. As always, I'm your own this video. For all of you guys watching Joe today, we have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Friday. Oh, happy Friday, folks. Everyone, if you guys want to talk to you, I'm going to be your Take care and make good choices. 607 all day, baby.